Okay, let's get started. So this is a problem about static equilibrium. Uh, depending on which book you're studying from, it may show up in a different chapter than it did for me. So let's read through it once. <clears throat> so a shop sign, that's right here, it weighs 245 newtons. So they already totaled us the weight. Uh, they did mass times gravity to give us 245 newtons. So this force is known to us. It's supported by a uniform 155 Newton beam. So the keyword here is uniform, right? Uniform means that uh, the material is distributed evenly and there will be one center of mass, one center of gravity for the entire material. So you can draw one single line. So it's a uniform material. It seems like, uh, uh, it's not exactly hanging at the end here, this rope, but uh, for the purposes of this problem, I'm just going to assume that they meant to hang this rope at the very edge. And probably they drew it three-dimensionally. So that's why, you know, it's probably coming out from behind the face face of this uh, rectangle. But the point is that this is an dangling, the sign is dangling at the very end of the beam. So the entire length of the beam is 1.70 meters. In that case, where would the uniform 155 Newton beam's center of mass be? It would be center of mass. It would be in center of 1.70 meters divided by two. That's exactly where the 155 Newtons would point down from, right? And now they want to know the tension in this wire right here. That's the tension they want to know. And tension is just a fancy name for force. All right, let's uh, clean this up a little bit and get started. We read the problem and uh, well they, they'll want one more thing they'll want the horizontal and vertical forces exerted by the hinge this is the hinge so they're saying hey you know it probably pushes this way a little bit and it's probably pushing up or down whatever it is the direction um, what are those forces and we have to figure that out so let's start simple first of all let me just put an arrow here so I'm going to pretend that this is just one single beam right here, right? Okay, hopefully that's clear. And from this one single beam, you have forces being applied to it. So this 35 degree, um, well, let's keep it simple. So one force is going straight down at the very end. And the number for that force is 245N. Another force is dead center. It's going down and it's 155 Newtons. Another force is here somewhere and it's probably going up. It's just that we don't know what the tension is. So we might not necessarily know, not know what the up part of that is. And I, let me draw that a little differently. Tension is a sum of its parts. So there's something pulling this way in the x direction and something pushing up in the y direction, right? That is what makes up tension. So if you know the Sokator rule or the mnemonic, we can actually uh, substitute uh, some equations here. So given that uh, tension is actually the, also you can call it the hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse, right? So if we know the hypotenuse and we know the angle, so we know sine of the angle and cosine of the angle. So we can find opposite, which is this one. And we can find adjacent, which is this one, right? This is adjacent to the 35 degree angle. And that's opposite to the 35 degree angle. Okay. so this a would become let's see you would have cosine of 35 is equal to adjacent over tension tension is the hypotenuse that means adjacent side is tension times cosine of 35 right what about opposite opposite would if you derive it would become tension times sine of 35 degrees so we can we can set that down here. Let's do that. I'm going to write that down here. That hey, opposite is just nothing more than tension multiplied by sine of 35 degrees, and adjacent is nothing more than tension multiplied by cosine of 35 degrees. And that's it. You can get rid of all this other stuff. Okay. So whatever I'm drawing, let's see here right? It's fair to also draw it here, correct? Like it's, I don't know if this is obvious, so I'll draw it for you guys. 
be very clear. I drew these two lines like so. It's it's all the same deal for me to draw the component, the x and y components like this. That also yields this t vector. So this is also t of sine 35 degrees. And this is also t of cosine 35 degrees. So now that I've made that easy, I'll take these guys away. Okay. So now uh, the easiest thing to calculate is when you have a simple beam and it says there's a force here, there's a force up here, and there's a force down here, right? In static in equilibrium, that that is the simplest thing to work on, uh, depending where the hinge is, right? Is the hinge here? Is the hinge here? Like, where is it pivoting? Where, what is the circular motion this way? Or is the circular motion maybe if it's like, if the hinge is like this, like a seesaw, then is the circular motion this way and this way, this way, stuff like that. Anyway, so now I think we made it fairly simple. There's a hinge here, that's this guy right here, right? There's a hinge here. And at some distance, actually it says 1.35 meters, at 1.35 meters, let me point that out for everybody. At 1.35 meters, there's a force pointing up and that force is T sine of 35 degrees, right? And at, let's see, uh, center, which is 1.7, let's see, what is that, 35? Yeah, mm, I think that's 1.35. No, wait, let's be sure, 1.7 divided by two, Oh, sorry, 0 0.85. So at 0 0.85 meters, there's a force going down. And that was given to be 155 Newtons weight of the uniform bar. And at the very end, there's again a force going down that's 245 Newtons. So if you remember the equation for, you know, it's just distance um, from the moment arm, the distance radius times the force. So let's do that. 0 0.85 meters times 155, right, going down. And it's not moving, so all of this must be equal, right? They must, they must equal out somehow. Sum of all torques must equal to zero. Uh, so let's say, hmm, so generally counterclockwise clock, you can give plus minus. I'm going to call the, uh, yeah, so basically the downward force plus the downward force, what is that? Uh, this this distance was 1.7 meters, 1.70 meters complete, 1.70 meters, 245. So that's torque A, torque B, and that must, that just has to equal the torque going in that direction. So, you know, for now, I'm not even gonna call it T sine 35, I'm just going to call it the Y component. I'm going to call it T of Y. That must equals, 1.35 meters multiplied by T of Y, the Y component of tension. Not even gonna get into the other stuff right now. Okay, so this, this we can solve for. We can find T of Y should be the same as all of this, right, 1.70, 245, divided by 1.35, That's that's got to be it. So let's, do the math here, 0 0.85 times 155, 131.75 plus 1.70 times 245, or 16.5 over 1.35. Keep going, T of Y, I think that was 131.75, just make that clear. So 131.75. 16.5 plus 131.75 is 548.25 divided by 1.35 and that is 406.1111 it just repeats so let's just round it to actually these guys are working in three decimal places I think 35.0 1.35 1.70 2.45 1 yeah they're working in two decimal places I can probably say 0 0.850 since I divided by two, three decimal places. And uh, yeah, so we'll just round it off to 406 Newtons. That's the Y component 
right? So if that's the y component, 406 newtons, and that's equal to tension times sine of 35 degrees, then tension is simply 406 newtons divided by sine of 35 degrees. And that's, that's just beautiful. Um, 406 divided by sine of 35 degrees, and that's 707.8. You can round that to 708 newtons. I hope that made sense. That was pretty easy. So this tension is 708 newtons. And this T sine of 35 is 406 newtons. We can even go ahead and find the uh, horizontal component, the T of Y, right? T of X, sorry, T of X. T of Y equals T sine 35 equals 406 newtons. T of X is what? Let's see, 708, 708 multiplied by cosine of 35 degrees, 35 degrees, that's 579.9, so let's just round that to 580, 580 newtons. Okay, that's pretty, pretty easy. So let's go back, what, what were we asked? Find the tension in the wire, right? We know that, the answer is 708 newtons is the tension in the wire and the horizontal and vertical forces exerted by the hinge on the beam. So now let's let's continue with the free body diagram. Uh, the force exerted by this is, since, since this uh, beam isn't driving into the wall and it's not jumping off of the wall, then all the y force, x forces must be in equilibrium, right? So the force exerted by the wall, the force exerted by the wall in the x direction must, you know, sum of all, forces in the x direction is zero, means that whatever this force is exerting, uh, whatever amount of newtons, is the same thing as whatever T of x is exerting, because that's the only force going in that direction, minus T of x is equal to zero, which means force of the wall in the x direction is exactly equal to T of x, right? Which means force of, of, of the wall is 508 newtons. That's how hard the wall is pushing on the beam in the x direction, right? So this is this is this in that direction, opposite to the direction of uh, the wire, wire's x component. Now let's uh, think about uh, what else. They also want to know the vertical forces exerted by the hinge on the beam. Okay, I'm going to have to think about this one. Vertical forces. Sum of all vertical forces is zero. So let's see. Um, sum. Oops. Sum of all forces in the y direction is zero. That's why nothing is moving. So we're gonna forget about. This is not about torque. This is about forces. So we're gonna forget about the distance from the arm, I suppose. And there's the force of the wall in the y direction. I'm not going to comment on the sign right now because I really just don't know. Um, plus, we, let's just pick something I suppose. 155 newtons being pushed down, uh, 245 newtons being pushed down, 406 newtons being pushed up. Uh, this must all equal to zero. So what is that? 155 plus 245 uh, 400 newtons minus 406 newtons equals zero. And we still don't know what the wall does in the y direction. So if you look at that, it solves to be force of the wall in the y direction must be positive six newtons. So, you know, the sign helps. That's what's missing. That's the contribution that was missing. And uh, we said that uh, here that down was plus and up was negative. That's how I assigned the signs to the other forces over here. Positive, positive, negative. Up is negative. So then that must be simple as that. So this is plus, so this force must plus is here, so pointing down. So now I can actually go here and say, hey, this force that the wall is exerting, is it's actually pushing down on the beam with a force of six newtons. And, uh, yeah, that would be all. Uh, if anybody finds a mistake in what I did, please feel free to correct me in the comments. And thank you for listening.